API developer portals. There are more and more out there because they're important. A lot of companies do have APIs that they work with. And today we'll talk about the state of API developer portals. And with me is Alexandre Evo. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? Hi, Eric. Doing well. great. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, so you are the, the co-founder and CEO of Blobber. So you are selling a developer portal. And you have gone through the effort of creating a report that looks at the state of what companies are doing, what kind of features they're using, what pricing models they're using. And I find that really interesting because I think for most of us, compiling this data would be really hard. And you've gone through this and we'll link, of course, to your report um, from the video. And before we talk a little bit about what's in the report, could you share with us very briefly how you got to the 100 companies that you are covering in the report, how you ended up looking at those 100 companies and their API developer portals. Sure. Um, yeah, happy to share that. So actually, we map a lot of uh, companies who have APIs. So whether they are API first or not API first companies. Um, but we believe that from the sources of um, companies that we, we, we track, so we track uh, thousands of uh, companies, we, wow. uh, we, we analyze as well API first uh, companies. And from those API first companies, the way that we define them as API first companies, uh, those are definitely uh, companies where their core business is selling an API. So meaning that most of their revenue comes from directly selling the API. That's our definition, maybe different opinions there. Um, but from, 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 from those, from this data, we, uh, we, we looked at all those companies and we took the, the criteria about the funding, which is something that is uh, an objective way to, uh, to define uh, or at least to analyze a, a company and a criteria that is uh, quite objective and it's uh, public information most of the time. Um, so we took this, uh, this approach looking at companies who got the most funding, mostly data coming from uh, uh, Crunchbase. And from there, um, we, uh, we started to, to look at those companies between different criteria and splitting them between service uh, companies, uh, data companies, and uh, processing uh, companies. So definitely service companies, companies proposing a service like a signature uh, service, uh, like you would have DocuSign. Data, it can be like weather information, weather data, and processing more in the, in the spirit of uh, AI companies. Um, and from there, uh, we, uh, for the methodology to look at the different criteria that we would uh, 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 define, we, we looked at the top 10 companies in terms of funding, which uh, formed uh, and established the baseline of the criteria that we want to analyze uh, in terms of features of the portal, pricing strategy, and so on. And we took those uh, uh, criteria, which are the baseline, to analyze the rest of the 100 uh, uh, API first companies. So my summary of this would be, you only look at companies that directly monetize APIs, which already like, say, make, makes things like a little selective. And then you looked at those, like you used funding kind of as a proxy for company success, let's say. And it's probably a good one, I would say, good enough one. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that, I mean, what you can see when, when you look at your list, right, is that your meth, method can't be so bad because you have the, the, typical, um, the typical companies one would expect, like Stripe or Twilio and these kinds. Th these are all, like, at the top of your list, right? So I think you, like, whatever your methodology looked like, you ended up with a data set that I think looks very plausible. Um, and then you looked at the 10 top ones and you looked at typical features that they use in the API portals. So tell us a little bit about the key features that you found where it's probably safe to assume that if the very successful companies are all using those portal features, these are probably important features. Yeah, so, so the, the most, I would say the most common uh, features from uh, those 10, of course, uh, uh, companies, but even the top 100 is definitely, which was quite surprising even for us, working in the developer portal space uh, is having a mobile version yeah. of the of the portal 
And that is surprising. I, I, to me, when, when you first told me that, I was also surprised. It's like, okay, why not? But it's kind of strange that you seem to need that or everybody seems to think they need it. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, almost, uh, yeah, it's, it's really like a default uh, feature for all those companies. And they have as well the possibility that you, you can start without credit card and uh, uh, you can even have like a, a self-registration to the portal. So you can really start and play with the API really quickly. Um, you can have uh, sample examples. You have, of course, the reference of the API. Um, you have as well other uh, features like a search bar. You can have a, a customer use cases about how the API has been used in the real life by uh, their own customers, which is something that is really common, of course, for those successful uh, APIs. And as well, you have uh, errors des description. This is as well uh, um, some features that we see as a standard for all those, uh, those companies. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and, and you have listed, you have a much longer list of features in the report. Again, we we'll, we'll link to that. And I think it's just interesting to see. And for, for everybody looking at the report, I think it's just an interesting inspiration to think about the features that maybe not everybody needs all of them, but at least thinking about those, being aware of those features is probably a good idea. And then for those, for those features which are outside of these, like the top 10 that you look, are there any others that stand out where you, let's say that surprised you, where you wouldn't have thought that this is a, a, a common or a, a popular feature that, that you saw out there in the wild and you didn't really expect it to see? Um, yeah, th there are some features which are more like uh, really, I would say, uh, sometimes uh, really niche, for instance, having diagrams. And we have seen that uh, mostly for APIs where the, the price is really high and seems really complicated and it's almost like enterprise uh, API selling to enterprise. enterprise. And we have seen that there are a lot of diagrams which are sometimes quite complicated, but providing like the full picture of how it's working. Mm -hmm. um, and we have seen it in very specific uh, uh, cases. So interesting one. But more generally speaking, we, we see that the best performing or, the, or I would say the, the top 10 companies and the, or I would say the top, uh, top 20 and even 20, top 30 uh, in terms of funding and, uh, and as well uh, other success criteria, potentially like uh, traffic on their portal. What they have in common is they tend to have more API use case approach. So really defining specific use case for their customers, uh, something that we have mapped and in proportion, they have it much more than others. They have as well the logs of all the uh, API calls that are available for, for their customers. So something really interesting as well. And then they have other things that we have analyzed, like having a, a portal that is uh, optimized for SEO, mm -hmm. having the possibility to, to have, for instance, a direct chat as well. So you, you can uh, directly communicate with uh, your API provider. Another feature that is really uh, picking up and we've seen uh, very interesting is definitely a CLI. Uh, growing like uh, crazy in a, in, a, in a, we, we have seen that uh, as a company, but we have seen as well a, a few companies that are performing very well who have a CLI for their customers. Uh, and then, of course, alerts in case of uh, misuse, misuse of, uh, of the API or uh, when you are reaching the quota of your plan if you are using a, an API in a specific plan. Those are the, the yeah, most different types. Most, most features that are differentiators. Okay. And since you mentioned it, and I think that's a good um, segue for us, um, plans. So pricing plans are one of the things that I think a lot of people are always thinking about, right? How should we do API pricing? If, if that is something that you want to do, not everybody does it. But in your sample of companies, everybody does it because that's your definition of uh, the companies that you included. So what did you see in terms of pricing plans? I think that's another interesting insight that, that you can find in your report, that you looked at all these pricing plans and you also looked at what models companies use and, and what they base these models on. So what did you find there? Yeah, so sure. So basically we see um, the way we consider things is, uh, and we have seen the data, it's either they have a subscription model so let's say that you have a, 
uh, monetization based on, uh, let's say, 100 euros for one month, and you can uh, make like 1,000 calls. Or you have a pay-as-you-go business model where the, the pricing is going to be linked directly to the usage that you have of the, of the API. What we have seen is definitely that um, for processing APIs, so APIs uh, which are more related, for instance, to AI uh, at the moment, um, no one is using the subscription model. Everyone is going through the uh, pay-as-you-go model, so really pay-per-use. Um, and that we have seen as well that the companies that are the most mature, actually, they seem to have like a pay-as-you-go pricing model and they tend to have a pricing model which is not linked to the API calls, which is a kind of the obvious thing that everyone thinks about when uh, thinking about monetizing APIs based on calls. But actually, they have refined at a, at a very granular level what is the value metric that they want to monetize against. So instead of calls, it can be monthly active users, it can be resources, it can be uh, signatures, if it's uh, di digital signatures, really the, the, the core value that you provide through your, through your, your API. So we have yeah. seen it uh, a lot, and it's super interesting, this part, yeah. Yeah, and I think, that, I mean, to me, that sounds like it, it makes a lot of sense, right? In the end, it doesn't really matter how often I call an API. It also, that depends also a lot of, on how the API is designed, right? <laughs> Some APIs need more calls than others. So, it, you know, counting calls seems like a strange way of really assessing value that I get out of an API. And what you're saying is that companies are getting better and better at really focusing on the, the value that they provide. I think that's my takeaway from what you said, that the companies are better at finding the value and then expressing the value clearly to you and also making sure that like they they charge you by the value that you get and not by some technical indicator. Yeah, definitely. And, and what we've seen as well is um, how, how we found that as well is that the pricing quite often goes down as they, they grow because they are able to better capture, that's our, as well, our interpretation, uh, better capture the value that they provide with a value metric that is the most granular possible, possible uh, with the most, most granularity as possible. So if I take the example of a signature, it's the signature in which context? Is it a, a signature of employees, of customers? Uh, they can analyze that and have like a granular interpretation of the value metric that they provide to you. And which is super interesting to, yeah. to really monetize, but to go that far in this, in this way of thinking about the monetization, of course, they have been through different steps before explaining maybe why they have been uh, now so granular about uh, monetization metric. That is actually fascinating. But, you know, I, I think that as a company, you know, as you're growing, what happens, you, you, you have more customers, right? You learn more about your customers. You understand more what value exactly you provide. You start segmenting them into, you know, to those, I provide this value, to those, I provide that value. And you also may understand that for some, you can actually tweak the product a little bit or you, you can provide a slightly different service, right? So I think just the, the way how companies are able to target their markets, so to speak, right? It just becomes more refined as their markets are growing because they understand their markets better and they can also segment the market better into different populations. That to me, that is really an interesting um, observation. There mm -hmm. is, is this study something that you've done before. I mean, have you? You know, it, it would be interesting to actually do snapshots, right, and and look at how, for example, also pricing models maybe change year over year for the same company. I think that also is that something you've done or you consider doing. Yeah, definitely. So, so this was a huge work uh, from the team. Uh, <laughs> analyzing the, all of this, it took like uh, uh, more than two months of work um, by several people. Not 100% of the time that, but uh, yeah, a long, a long time. So we, our data is, uh, you know, it's not a snapshot at a very uh, precise date. It, uh, it spans uh, among uh, several months. But definitely, we plan to do the same next year and have this view 
uh, every year of how the market evolves uh, in terms of what are the features that are uh, used in terms of developer portal and how the pricing strategies evolve over time. So it's definitely something that uh, we plan uh, and consider to do uh, next year again. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so Alexander, thank you so much. I think this is really, really interesting, and I, I'll, you know, I'll take you up like with, you know, having a report next year as well. So you'll be back a year from now, <laughs> and I'm looking forward, you Amazing. know, to to have your report. Then, you know, saying and this is what changed because I think these are really the interesting things that, or even more interesting things, right, that you can get when you you have not just one, but you actually have this evolution. But for now, I think. It's already quite interesting. So if you're interested in API portals, if you want to build one, I mean, set one up for your company. If you're interested in what others are doing, what popular features are, check out the report. We'll link it from here. And um, I think, Alexander, any closing words from you? Um, yeah, that's uh, always um, what, what we see is uh, really fascinating is the best, maybe uh, another uh, final thought about that, the best uh, companies uh, put extra care for their customers. And, um, and it tra it's translative in understanding how your, your customers use your portal and communicate appropriately. And it's just fascinating to see how the Stripe and Twilio's of the world do that. So really thinking about how the portal is not uh, just a window of your API, but it's the opportunity to create a long last, long lasting relationship with your customers. Very good closing words. Thanks. So everybody check out the report. I think it's really interesting. We we'll link to it. And with that, we're done for today. Thanks everybody for joining. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And with that, keep getting APIs to work. Bye everybody.